we were on the island looking uh, at the birds who were doing very well in 2002, and a storm came along. Again, more wind than you typically get, and things get windier as the, as the climate is changing, so that the ice moved from being right offshore Cooper to being quite some distance offshore in the next day. And I was somewhat excited because I thought this would be a great time to test what's happening with Arctic cod, and, and mainly because we had chicks in all the nests at that point. Instead, we woke up and found a polar bear walking around our campsite. Um, this was, I was out weighing chicks when this happened. Uh, I looked back and saw this uh, and had two people with me and realized I was the one who had to go back and get the gun that is in that tent. Uh, and that if the bears started walking toward us, I didn't know what we were going to do. But, um, but I mean, it, it, was, it was truly scary. It, it took place and we thought, well, I've, I've seen two polar bears in the previous 30 years, so this is my, this is my one for, for, this, for, the, for this decade, probably. But what happened instead is that we had around 20 to 22 polar bears go by our camp from east to west heading for Point Barrow, which is where this photo was taken, where there were 60 to 100 polar bears that massed on the beach because of the fact that the pack ice had pulled offshore so quickly. My dentist, who actually comes to my friends at Cooper Island events, thought that was really good and pointed out to me that more people died from gingivitis than from polar bears. <laughs> so that, so that if, if, if I really wanted to play the odds, I should take the sonic air. So guillemots are definitely having a problem with this warming of the Arctic, but a subarctic species, the, the, the horned puffin, which was not seen in Barrow uh, up until the 1950s, which increased in numbers in the 60s and 70s, and first bred on Cooper Island in 1986, they have come in as things have warmed up. And they are now breeding in the same nest boxes. As, and, and these are definitely the first northern Alaska records of horned puffins. So now on, on the island, we have a subarctic species that's coming in and doing rather well, expanding its population. And we have an arctic species that's doing poorly. Uh, horned puffins don't like pack ice. Horned puffins try to stay away from pack ice. Um, and certainly in terms of how they get their prey, they, they don't like to feed under pack ice. So they are now monitoring the nearshore waters in terms, of, in terms of prey abundance. Unfortunately, they're a very charismatic species, and people tend to like them even more than guillemots in terms of their looks. But also, unfortunately, as they prospect for nest sites, they go into active guillemot nest sites and kill chicks. Uh, in, 19, in, in 2003, when the ice was well offshore and the puffins were feeling very good, they went in and killed 60 of the 180 chicks that were on the island. So, so just like the displaced polar bears killed all the chicks one year as the pack ice pulled offshore, these are uh, puffins that could only be up there if the pack ice was well offshore, and they are, they, they are killing guillemot chicks. Once the ice leaves areas like the Chukchi Sea, this is the SST anomaly. You can see how much things have warmed up because of the fact that the ice is no longer covering this area and the water is able to absorb uh, all of that solar radiation and increase. So as all this melt is taking place offshore, in, 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 in 2003, I find out that the Army Corps of Engineers, because of the rapid erosion that's taking place in Barrow, wants to come out to Cooper Island and use it as a source of gravel for their beach uh, enhancement. Uh, permafrost, as it is melting, is letting the shoreline melt. Wave action on not, now just sand and gravel cliffs that used to be sand, gravel, and ice cliffs makes the shoreline retreat much more quickly. And the people in Barrow, who have a large infrastructure there, are very concerned about this. So they really had, they came out to Cooper Island and tried to figure out if they could possibly take the whole island away and take it back to Barrow to build a new beach. Unfortunately, all of the permafrost at Barrow all, or on, on Cooper Island also melted. Uh, three years ago, uh, I went out to the island, and I've always kept yogurt and cheese, which I took out there at the start of the year, but I, it doesn't stay long. Um, um, and I've always kept that next to the permafrost, so I, so I would dig a hole, usually maybe six inches deep when I, when I first get there, and keep digging the hole a little bit deeper as, as that ice under it would melt. And usually, never having to dig a hole deeper than two feet or so to, to be able to keep perishables next to, uh, to, to permafrost. In 2003, I went out there and started digging the hole, in June, when in the past I would even have trouble putting a tent stake in, and I kept digging through the island and I hit water. And I have to say that in terms of things that shocked me, things that, that were just like, okay, now do you get it? It's like this island that used to be permafrost had essentially had its permafrost core melt to the point where, I mean, and my first feeling was, wait a minute, what's holding this island together? And actually, there isn't much holding the island together. Uh, it has had major erosion since then, and it, there, was a, there was a major storm last fall that seems to have, from the photos I've seen, had a major impact 
on the whole island, though the colony is still intact. So this is likely all tied to carbon emissions. And I, and I think that you know how carbon emissions uh, um, cause an increase in greenhouse gases so that, it, so, so that more solar, solar radiation is trapped. I don't really want to go through that whole thing now, but um, guillemots uh, are tied to this because they bred in 55-gallon drums that were left up there in the 50s. Uh, I was only up there because of oil interests in terms of getting oil out of Prudhoe Bay and then offshore drilling in the 70s. Now I'm not going out with any oil interest or money. But this is the sort of thing that is happening as a result of these carbon emissions. Uh, a polar bear in 2002 at Prudhoe Bay started walking south down the Hall Road, um, uh, mainly because bears that were, that, that were, that were swimming north were, were actually found drowned offshore. This one was heading south, I suppose, thinking that it might find something better, and it encountered a, uh, a fuel truck coming up with, with hydrocarbons, uh, and you have hydrocarbons going down that same pipe in the back. So it's all, it's all hydrocarbons there.